is up, fellow web swingers. In today's video, I will be getting the Platinum Trophy for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Like many of you out there, I was a major fan of Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales, getting the Platinum in both versions of each game. Ever since the sequel was teased back in 2021, I have been eagerly waiting to see what the geniuses at Insomniac would cook up for this entry. This has without a doubt been one of my most anticipated games of 2023, and I knew from the get-go that this would be another Spidey adventure I was going to Platinum. That time has finally arrived, so let's swing in and grab another Platinum Trophy. Before diving straight into the video, I want to toss out a quick spoiler warning for Spider-Man 2, not only for the story, but also for many of the surprises that the game has in store. The first part of this journey is to play through the story, and I plan on going more in depth with that aspect because I really want to talk about it. So if you want to skip ahead to the second phase of the trophy hunt to avoid story spoilers, feel free to do so. Still here? Alright, let's get this game started. The story starts with a bang as Miles and Peter have to fight off the Sandman. Not only was this an impressive way to begin the game, but it perfectly showcases how Insomniac is utilizing the PS5 to its fullest potential. After an explosive battle with this sand giant, and getting our introduction to Kraven the Hunter, I was rewarded with the first trophy of the game. Throughout the next few hours, we see Peter reminiscing with his childhood friend Harry, and dealing with Kraven's hunters along the way. While there aren't too many story related trophies during the game's early hours, I do want to highlight a couple of missions that stood out to me here. Make Your Own Choices puts us in the shoes of Miles as he goes to warn Black Cat about the hunters that are after her. Now this may get a boost because I'm a major simp for Black Cat, but again this mission perfectly highlights the power of the PS5 and reminded me a lot of what Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart accomplished only a couple of years ago. A second chance sees the gang get together for the fair at Coney Island. It was a nice laid back mission that honestly had me thinking back to the times when I went to the fair as a kid. That is until things escalate when hunters arrive looking for Tombstone and we finally get to see Harry unleash his venom powers. This dynamic carries over in the next couple of missions when we have to rescue Tombstone and Dr. Connors. We're a bit late to the party in the latter mission, and a scuffle between Peter and Craven results in Peter getting severely injured. Just barely holding on to his life, the symbiote attaches itself to Peter, saving him and giving him the strength to fend off the remaining hunters. Now the hunt is on for Dr. Connors. After a chaotic chase in the river, Peter finds him in the sewer, which triggers a boss fight. We couldn't give him the cure in time, which results in another thrilling chase throughout the streets of New York. During the last wave, one where Peter is straight up throwing nothing but shade at Dr. Connors. No wonder your family left you. That kind of hurt me though. We finally give him the cure and learn more about the symbiote in one of the game's best missions. This game just continues to deliver when Peter goes on a rampage after hunters find his home. Now, it's no surprise when I say the MJ missions in the first game were some of the weaker ones, but here, they absolutely stand out. I wasn't sure how to feel when I saw they were back, but it was this mission that justified its reasoning. Seeing Peter's rage from someone else's point of view really drove home how much this suit is affecting him. Not only that, but this mission sees Miles unexpectedly get kidnapped by Kraven's hunters, shifting the focus over to him for a while. The overall narrative for Miles in this game is finding Martin Lee after his escape from the raft. The two come face to face and are forced to fight each other in an arena, but things take a turn when he goes in our head and we're forced to deal with Miles' fears and doubts. In all of this, he spares Lee and sets him free. Lee points Spider-Man in the direction of Kraven. The two face off in one of the more difficult bosses the game has to offer. Peter is close to killing him until Miles intervenes. Now it's a fight against Miles and Peter, and let me tell you, this fight was peak. The music, the dialogue between the two of them, everything about this mission was perfect. You don't mean that. All I wanted was to save everyone. MJ, May. Now this city thinks that I'm the problem. You think I'm the problem? But I'm not anymore! At the end of it all, we're finally able to free Peter from the symbiote. 
we bring it back to Oscorp when it attaches back to Harry and turns him into Venom. And yet another unexpected twist, we get to go on a rampage as Venom. Like dude, Insomniac is just flexing at this point because holy shit. This rampage continues in Times Square when we come face to face with Kraven. Things do not end well as Kraven's last hunt comes to an end and Harry fully embraces the symbiote. If you thought I was done geeking out about the story, well you're wrong. Harry pays a visit to MJ which gets our attention. At this point, Harry has fully adapted to the personality splitting symbiote. What does he do now? He turns MJ into a symbiote of her own, and now we have to fight her. The bangers just keep coming, my god. After another tense boss fight, we set MJ free and she makes a bold move she should have done a while ago. After seeing Peter's fears unfold and unlocking the anti-symbiote suit, it's time for the finale. Using every playable character in the game, we're able to defeat Venom, destroy the symbiote, and save not only New York, but the world from the symbiote. The game gives us a satisfying ending to this body adventure and sets things up for an inevitable sequel. That covers the main story and the trophies that are associated with it. Now it's time to tackle the rest of what Spider-Man 2 has in store. There are a few miscellaneous trophies I got while playing the story that we can go ahead and knock out. The first was simply equipping a new suit. Then there were a couple that had to do with the aerial tricks. By far the easiest one was failing a trick before landing on the ground. Sorry Pete. After that I went on to perform 30 air tricks in a row before touching the ground. This honestly took me much longer than I would like to admit. For a while I didn't realize it had to be 30 different tricks. I would just hold down the left stick in one direction for a long stretch of my swing. I also would do a wall run to try and stay in the air longer, but this would reset my streak. It took a few tries, but I was eventually able to nail it and unlock the trophy. Let's transition into the combat trophies. There are not too many, but these were the ones I kept in the back of my head as I played through the story. I was able to get one early on with one of the game's newest features that allowed me to make a web line from wherever I was during a stealth encounter. I just had to do stealth takedowns 25 times from these web lines. You never know. Next were the trophies for taking down enemies using the spider arms, Miles' evolved venom powers, the symbiote, and a couple of others. These were some that I did throughout the story and I got most of them during the same mission. The first one I got was for defeating 100 enemies with the spider arms. Using the reverse flux ability to pull 6 enemies together simultaneously as Miles. Defeating 100 enemies with the evolved venom powers. And using symbiote abilities 25 times during symbiote surge. You might have noticed these symbiote enemies. Introduced late in the game, they are complete punching bags taking everything we can dish out. That is until we get the anti-venom suit. With these powers we can weaken the symbiotes and defeating one that is affected by this gives us a trophy. Whoa, what is this? Rounding out everything that has to do with combat. Now let's talk about the game's side missions. The first two sets of trophies I unlocked were for Miles' side missions. The first set took place at his school, Visions Academy. Some of them were pretty fun, like helping find a teacher who was kidnapped or looking for the school's mascot. Others were a bit cringy. You know exactly which one I'm talking about. Maybe you should call yourself the Great Electric Spider. After completing five of them, I unlocked a suit and the trophy. Visions is the best. The next string of side missions had to deal with items that were being stolen from a museum. It's your typical Spider-Man affair of chasing leads and recovering the stolen items, but some change up the formula like using the Spider-Bot during the majority of one of the missions. However, the payoff is something I really resonated with. 
Seeing all of these historic African American men and women being celebrated made me feel seen, especially in such a big game like this. It's something I wish we could see more of in other video games. The main side mission for Peter had to do with the flame. A mysterious cult has made its way into New York, and with the help of Wraith, aka Yuri, we learn more and more about who is behind the cult and their intentions. We don't technically put a stop to them, but this perfectly sets up Carnage, who I suspect will come in some kind of DLC or maybe the third game. Not only were these a fun set of missions, but they also explored the themes of what it truly means to be Spider-Man. After completing the final flame mission, I popped the trophy. While Peter doesn't have a lot in terms of his own side missions, others from random people can be done as either Peter or Miles. There's only six of them, and all of them are amazing. I won't go into too much detail with most of these, but my favorite out of the bunch were Find Grandpa, which seriously had me thinking about life when it was over, Monster in Queens, and Howard. Meeting up with our good old friend from the first game, he wants us to help find his pigeons, the ones we had to find in the first game, a new home. Like many of you guys out there, something about this mission really moved me. Swinging through the city with Seabird calmly playing in the background as I helped these pigeons brought a smile to my face. That is until we came back to the dock to find out that Howard sadly passed away. All of these missions were spectacular and go to show how far Insomniac has come when it comes to this aspect of their games. I ended up getting a trophy for helping Howard one last time and completing all of the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man requests. Sort of keeping in line with the side missions are the different things we can do around the city. While most of them are available to both Peter and Miles, each of them has something exclusive to them. For Miles, it's Prowler tech stashes and Mysteriums spread around the city. For the Prowler stashes, they reward you with rare tech parts and also dive into Uncle Aaron's past as the Prowler. All of this culminates in a satisfying conclusion from Miles, his mom, and Uncle Aaron. Mysterio is a villain I wasn't expecting to see, and having Miles at the center of his story was a nice twist to the formula. Each mission has a different objective to complete within a certain time limit, like defeating 20 enemies or performing 6 finishers. I will say there was one that kept pissing me off with such strict requirements. Seriously, defeating 20 enemies in less than 1 minute? When all was said and done, I went face to face with Mysterio in a trippy mission and was able to set Beck free, completing his set of missions. As for Peter, his activities are with the EMF experiments. One of the main story beats is Harry and Peter trying to create a better world through the Emily May Foundation. After completing that initial mission, multiple stations are set up around the city. After completing the 8th one, the final mission sees Peter hear Harry's voice one more time through a hologram as he gives him hope for the rebuilding of EMF. Like most side missions, this also gives us a cool suit and yet another trophy. Next are the general open world activities. First are the photo ops that help showcase New York from a different light. Perfect. I mean, I mean, it ain't, it ain't my fault. After the fight with Sandman, fragments of his mind are scattered around the city. Each one gives us a hint into Sandman's mind, and we learn that all he wanted to do was care for his daughter, something that was taken away due to Craven. When we find all of them, we deliver the completed statue to his daughter, Kimia. The next two deal with Craven. Some drones contain information on different victims around the city. Using our web wings to stay in a slipstream, we download the data one bird at a time, giving us some weird results of who Craven is after. These missions help to set up Chameleon, another villain we might see more of in a later entry. Hunter bases are next. Swinging around the city, we'll often find these blind spots on random rooftops. This is a perfect opportunity to test our stealth skills and get closer to eventually finding the actual Hunter base. There are 12 blinds which lead to 4 different bases. Each base gives you some backstory into Craven, which resulted in a tragic end for his family. The last activity I tackled was the symbiote nest. At each nest lies one or two hearts that need to be destroyed with a sonic burst. 
However, it's never that simple. Set on a timer, we have to defend these devices for a specific amount of time, so there was a lot of punching, webbing, and raging over the next 30 or so minutes, destroying 10 of the symbiote nests, giving me some dope suits, and of course... With these being some of the last things I did in my Platinum journey, I also got a trophy for reaching the max level of 60. Alright, we're almost done here. Let's talk about upgrades. Throughout all of the activities I've talked about, you earn different components to unlock suits and buy upgrades. This can range from tech parts to city and hero tokens, along with many more. Tech parts are essential for pretty much everything you plan to purchase in the game, and you'll earn them steadily throughout the game. We even got a trophy for collecting a total of 10,000 tech parts. As my platinum journey was coming to an end, this is when I eventually had enough resources to purchase all gadget upgrades, all tech upgrades, and every available suit. To round things out, let's talk about the final few miscellaneous trophies I needed. Near Coney Island is Big Apple Baller Stadium. I simply had to round all four bases here. And Parker does it all with the home run bunt. This next one was very similar to one of the trophies I got from the Saints Row games I platinumed recently. I had to use only my web wings to glide from the financial district to Astoria. As you would imagine, these two points are on opposite sides of the map, so wind tunnels were essential here as they helped keep me in the air longer. It took only a couple of tries, but I was eventually able to get it. Now it's time to get sentimental for a minute. As Peter, I visited Aunt May's grave to assure her that I was doing alright. Back with a vengeance. And as Miles, I found the science trophy that we won with Finn. Trying to make a city we'd both be proud of. At this point in the video, I know you guys are probably saying he's missing something. Why hasn't he talked about this? I saved it for last for a reason. With the most amount of collectibles, there are 42 spider bots that we can find. This was probably my favorite thing about the game. These spider bots came with some serious drip and featured a lot of different characters like Rhino, Spider Pig, Mysterio, Spider Gwen. After I grabbed my last one, I actually got a trophy for getting 100% in all districts. You're stealing my look, man. And it opened up the final mission. Heading to a random address, a familiar portal opens up showing us how the Insomniac games are connected to the Spider-Verse. After solving the mystery of the Spider-Bot's origin, I unlocked a trophy and got my glorious Platinum. If you couldn't tell, I loved my time with Spider-Man 2. After spending a bit over 24 hours achieving this Platinum, I can say that my $70 purchase was justified. The story was everything I could ask for as a Spider-Man fan, full of exciting set pieces, riveting twists, and pacing that fired on all cylinders. While the gameplay is almost identical to the previous two entries, it has been streamlined and comes with some new features to keep things fresh and exciting. As for the trophy list, it was just as fun to go through. Most of it is stuff that you would accomplish naturally, but it implored me to go beyond the path that was laid out before me. I wouldn't necessarily say there's less stuff to do here, but the process of completing side activities and collecting things around the map, again, just feels more streamlined. Insomnia doubled down on the stuff that worked, which made for an easier trophy list, sure, but one that I was more excited to go through and clean up once the story was over. I can't for the life of me remember where I heard this, but someone out there said that Spider-Man 2 feels player friendly, and I couldn't agree more. Nothing is hindering the player from getting the Platinum Trophy, which you can see by the high unlock rate. There isn't really a need to look up a guide either, everything is just right there. And if you do need help, the hint system for certain trophies is just excellent. At the end of the day, I enjoyed my time with Spider-Man 2 and cannot wait for whatever comes next from Insomniac. Whether that be the anticipated Wolverine game, a Ratchet & Clank, 
or whatever Spidey adventure is next, I will be amped up for what's to come. That about does it for the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. What are your thoughts on Spider-Man 2? Is this your favorite out of the three games we've gotten so far? If you got the Platinum, what did you think of it? Leave your comments down below. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. So long, true believers.